Today we're going on a trip. It's my first plane ride in two years and five months. I've waited for this day for so long. More importantly, it's going to be my first time back to my home away from home, Port Martin, San Vicente. Since Port Martin is not as well known as other places in Palawan, let me chronicle my journey to this off-the-beaten-path destination. Specifically, my route starts at the newly reopened Runway Manila where you can cross from Newport City and enter into Terminal 3 without any lines. So, this trip isn't off to a great start. I had to change all my clothes. Uh, I was soaked in all this rain. I had to use one of my uh, clothes for the trip, so at some point I'm probably gonna have to do laundry. Um, so let's see. If you haven't used Runway Manila, what welcomes you to Terminal 3 would be the food hall. I wasn't sure what to expect, but I was surprised to see many of the restaurants and food stalls still closed. But looking back, this was the only part of the trip that still felt like the pandemic. Everything else was close to normal. I finished my online check-in at home and got my e-boarding pass but still chose to arrive early at the airport just in case I needed to submit any documents. Surprisingly, it was all a breeze and I didn't need to undergo any checks. I was through to the gate with my e-boarding pass just like the good old days. It's been a long time since I've seen an airplane up close so I couldn't help but marvel at their magnificence. Today, we're flying the Airbus AT21neo. I don't typically avail of seat selection, but because we're still in the pandemic, I did so this time and selected seat 29D. On the A321neo, there is no 29F as it's being used as a flight attendant jump seat. Between my selected seat and the jump seat, the middle seat 29E is tight so I was thinking that unless it's a full flight, the middle seat probably won't be given to anyone. My bet worked out and no one sat beside me. So this is just a tip if you are flying the A321neo. It was a short 1 hour journey into Puerto Princesa. This is still the cheapest way to get into Port Barton. You could also fly in via El Nido or San Vicente, but I wouldn't recommend it since those flights are typically more expensive. Other than a quick temperature check, there were no other documents needed, so getting through was a breeze as well at Puerto Princesa. I arrived after 7pm and wouldn't be able to catch any of the vans or buses going to Port Barton until the next day. Good morning guys, I had a well-rested sleep here last night in our small hut. It's great just going to sleep with nature in the background. Just so nice to wake up to the sounds of birds and just nature. Um, I'm not gonna give a full room tour of our hut, but if you want to check it out, um, one of the more famous travel vloggers, Jumping Places, actually stayed here and this is in their vlog. The trip to Port Barton usually takes around 3 hours and there are usually 3-4 to four van trips going to Port Barton, each by licensed operators SBE and Ricaro, scheduled early morning, midday, and late afternoon. Make sure to call ahead and reserve for a seat priced at 350 pesos. You can ask for airport or hotel pickup for an extra fee, but as for myself, I was taking the jeepney to the San Jose Terminal. As another option, you can also take a non-air conditioned bus at 250 pesos, but it travels a little slower. So I'm here now at the bus van terminal going to Port Barton. Uh, quite rainy, um, but yeah, looking forward to the trip. Guys, I'm back here at Port Barton. Um, again, first time back in two years, five months. I'm really not sure what to expect. 
yeah, aside from COVID and you know, really disabling the town, uh, Typhoon Odette also hit uh, last December. So, um, as for our place, I also am not sure what to expect. We still have a caretaker there, but with our place not being used in the last two years, I'm not sure how it is. Let's see what's in store. Uh, getting a little emotional <laughs> coming back home. I'm not gonna lie, Port Barton looks a lot different from its busy streets the way I left it in 2020. But that doesn't have to be a bad thing. Its beaches remain pristine, and while tourists may not be a plenty, it continues to be home to many locals, and we get to rebuild this thing all over again. For more on Port Barton, stay tuned to future videos.